On today's show, what automakers can do to protect their cars from hackers, a look at a thermoplastic suspension system, and could a new simulator make wind tunnels obsolete? All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily for October 16th of 2015. You know, we hear stories all the time about designers sitting on a milk crate inside a wind tunnel, shaping and reshaping a body panel for hours on end to get it just right. But a company by the name of EXA is helping automakers from all over the world to cut down on impractical and costly time spent in a wind tunnel. Its simulation software, called PowerFlow, allows an automaker to optimize aerodynamic design from the very beginning, and as a design evolves, the software can accurately predict the performance of those changes. PowerFlow is also able to show metrics that are impossible to capture in a wind tunnel, like airflow on the inside of a wheel, detailed understanding of flow over the underbody, and effects of minor changes to things like the A-pillar or mirrors. FCA used X's PowerFlow software with the new Chrysler 200 and said it was able to quote, capture more data than ever before, run more tests, and analyze more variations long before the first prototype of the vehicle was produced. Do you remember the Honda Vac feature that Honda rolled out for the 2014 Odyssey? Well, Edmunds has learned that it's so popular, the automaker is now considering rolling the feature and cross the entire Odyssey lineup. At first, Honda Vac was only available on the top-of-the-line Touring Elite model, and it's now offered on the Special Edition model, but cost is currently holding it back from the rest of the lineup. Not only is there the vacuum unit itself, but it also requires special wiring and unique interior panels. However, due to its popularity, it's possible we may see greater availability of Honda Vac once the automaker refreshes the Odyssey which some are speculating will happen for the 2017 model year. And in other Honda news, the company's luxury brand Acura has the safest lineup according to independent tests. It's the only brand that has an overall 5-star safety rating from NHTSA and a top safety pick plus from IIHS for its entire lineup. And to help get the word out, the company just launched a new ad campaign for both digital and traditional media to highlight its achievement. We'll be back with more news right after this. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, breakthrough technologies for lightweight vehicles. And by Pure Michigan, leading the automotive world in intelligent connected vehicles. We run on brain power. In the past, crossovers used to be more truck-like but now they perform more like a car. And that's one of the reasons we're seeing so many drivers trading in their sedans for a CUV. So do automakers need to change the dynamics of a passenger car to help differentiate them from a crossover to help kickstart sales? Michael Bryan, the head of corporate and product planning at Hyundai Motor America, amidst the brain trust at Hyundai, is still debating the issue. He told us on Autoline After Hours, and I quote, what do we need to do with Sonata to make sure it maintains its competitiveness as a sedan? It's a question we really haven't come to an answer with yet. So what do you think? Should sedans stay the way they are? Or should cars like the Sonata become sportier? Let us know in the comments section below. In the coming years, fuel economy standards will become much stricter. And one way to achieve those targets is to cut weight out of vehicles. Ford is using aluminum in the new F-150, and BMW has heavily invested into carbon fiber. And now Mexican auto supplier Rossini, which makes suspension and brake components, has teamed up with the University of Alabama at Birmingham to research, develop, and test composite materials in vehicles. The two will collaborate on developing a thermoplastic, fiber-reinforced polymer suspension system that's also fully recyclable over its entire life cycle. Automakers need to cut weight anywhere they can, so expect to see more solutions like this in the future. Coming up next, a look at what automakers need to do to protect their cars from hackers. Hey! Hey! 
Did you have a good nap? The Firestone Destination LE2. <laughs> Tough enough to handle anything the road throws at you. Oops. And you throw at it. Durable, dependable Firestone tires. Whatever you drive, drive a Firestone. Cybersecurity is a growing concern in the auto industry. The issue made big headlines earlier this summer when two hackers revealed they were able to remotely gain access to a Jeep Cherokee. On AutoLine this week, John sits down with three experts to talk about hacking and how the industry can fight against it. Here's a clip from that show. I think that kind of gets us to the root of the problem, which is that security needs to start in the design phase. Absolutely. Because it's right now the reason we're playing whack-a-mole and the reason we've ended up in this position is that, you know, now we have all of these vulnerabilities. And since it, the cars weren't designed necessarily always to be secure, because this hasn't really been a problem till recently, you know, we need to go back to the drawing board now and, and design these kinds of systems from the very but beginning. But Erica, as you know, it takes this industry a minimum oh, of yeah. three years to exactly. design a car. So you're talking about a solution. I'm talking about a solution now. that's three years out, yeah. But, but, it but is, you're saying that's but what it, it's going to take. But we should, we should start that now. And then we might have to go back to those cars that are already on the road. I mean, we, we know that it's going to be a long-term liability, that those cars on the road right now, we're going to have to keep protecting them and ensuring that they are secure for years to come, as long as the lifetime of the vehicle. So. It is good. It, I mean, this now is the time to go back to the drawing board and say, okay, every car from this moment forward needs to be as secure as it can be. But it's interesting, it's coming at the same time that they're putting software over the air updates, and it needs very similar changes to the system architecture. So yeah. they're probably going to put in both at the same time. Yeah. Is that how you see it, Jeff? Yeah, I mean, that is your response capability, right? You need, you need to be able to protect the, the systems in defensive measures or layers and then be able to respond through OTA um, over the air software update capability. I think it's both those are critical. Um, I also would say though, you know, too, you know, if you start with the drawing board, you can absolutely design it right in. But I think that yeah. there's very, um, very tangible, you know, actions that you can take oh, even, yeah. you know, in existing. And, and I think, you know, the, the research here recently showed that where um, you know, maybe uh, a firewall is left open with some ports left exposed and, and you want to close down those ports. You don't want mm -hmm. those things open sitting out there because those are the places that when they get a hand, their hands on those modules and they reverse engineer, that is the first thing they see and then they know their way into the, the vehicle. Definitely yes. so. <laughs> There's a lot of great insight into how the auto industry is working to protect cars from hackers in that show. And you can watch the entire discussion right now on our website. But that brings us to the end of today's show. Thank you for watching. Have a great weekend. Wards is the industry leader for news, data, and analysis. That's why companies across the globe subscribe to our premium service, maybe even your own. Log in for subscriber access now. Check your company's intranet for details and rely on wardsauto.com to keep you informed.